Hi, I'm Kendra Epperhart, and I'm here on View TV with View Magazine, and I'm here to tell my story. Hello, my name is Nelia, and I'm with the lovely Kendra. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Good. Well, I'm really happy that you're here today to share your story with us. So tell us your truth. Okay. Um, so this is about mental illness, though so I have it a lot in my family, actually. So my mom has a mental illness. Um, my uncles, you know, it just runs through my mom's side of the family. Wow. Um, growing up, so I start with my mom. Um, she got diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder, uh, depression, and anxiety. Now, a lot of people think just um, mental illnesses, they're all just one thing. There's, there's different types. You know, you got your moods, you got your anxiety, you got your eating disorders. It's like, it's different in sections. So, she has mood ones, those would be the depression and the bipolar. And, you know, anxiety is something on its own. So, with anxiety, you know, just get a lot of nervous when a lot is going on, you know, if it's too much to handle, you know, and all of that. And so, she had like a nervous breakdown at one point. You know, I had to go to the hospital, get situated, and come back out. Now, it wasn't like violent. People assume, you know, that with mental illnesses, people are violent. Those are the psychotic type of mental illnesses. So there's a difference. So she doesn't have any of those. But we, it was like a mental, health, a mentally ill person would harm themselves before they harm somebody else. But we didn't have like the whole horror story. People often you know talk about or anything she kept it together well she um she went to seek her on her own in her late 20s um got diagnosed i guess um around 30 and she's 46 now um and it's just you know um, with medication everything is you know fine and smooth um it's just basically she will you know it's like the it's just like i said the nurse broke down she'll just break down and you know cry or something be depressed on a moment you know and um, it has to do with a lot of like her upbringing. So, like I said, her upbringing wasn't all this, you know all that well. And when I wrote you all about it, um, both parents are alcoholics and drug addicts. Both of them. So she was raised by my great grandmother, and um, her upbringing was, you know, just them. You know, her and my great grandmother is 95 today, so she's been old forever. <laughs> That's how it seems, you know. I mean, not to say it like that, it's a blessing, but you it's know. a real blessing. It's a real blessing, <laughs> right? And you know, she's been growing up with like the older parent, right. you know. So, you know, my uncles, like I said, they also had their own mental illnesses. Um, a couple of there's more psychotic, so there's more violent. Um, most of my uncles spend a lot of time in jail, or maybe one spend more time in jail than anything. But like I said, when she was growing up, she had to deal with all of that, then find each other, then find her. You know, it's just a whole bunch of, it was a lot. And so, you know, as black people, we don't go and seek help or talk about it, you know, it just builds up. Right. So, I mean, she had me at 18, my brother, uh, three years later, at 21. And um, like I said, we were five, we was going, everything was good. You know, later, she started seeking help herself, working her whole life, working on her work system. Um, she was a single parent because my um, father passed and when I was in seventh grade. Yeah, that mm -hmm. sucks. So, you so know, sorry. it just grew up with her. And um, I grew up uh, similar to like a very mature for my age always. So, I mean, it wasn't as hard as people make it out to be. But, I mean, we had our ups and downs, but it was never like so much that my life was interrupted. Right. Maybe every now and then, like, if she had to go to the hospital, I had to like, you know, make sure my, my little brother is fine, you know, like something like that. But that's just basically her story. Right. But I've had my own troubles as well. So I also wrote you, you know, no one else knows, but I also wrote in the letter that um, I've had depression issues. I have Crohn's disease and I have not had that since birth. It's a chronic illness. Um, you can't get rid of it. It's not contagious. And I didn't know what was going on. I was in my um, sophomore year of college. Um, well, no, my junior year of college. And I just kept having a whole bunch of symptoms, like the flu. So I kept going to the doctor, you know, they don't know what's going on. I dropped 10 pounds like that, oh dropped another 10 like that. Oh so I got really depressed, like, I'm losing weight. I don't feel good. I'm trying to finish school because I'm getting a scholarship. You know, I got to get my GPA right. Yeah. It was a lot. I was like, got sick so much. And she helped me through that oh um, way better than I handled it. So I was just like having my own, like, I was getting sad about how I look. I didn't want to go a lot, you know, a lot of places like I used to. Um, I had to stop doing activities. I used to like, I used to 
dance routines. I just chill on that. It was hard keeping dreads up, but I mean, I did it. My story's not like, again, like other people, but my Crohn's is severe. So um, a couple years ago, I actually had some of my small intestines removed. I kept losing a lot of blood. So I almost died twice. Uh, so that was depressing too. So for a while, I kind of like stopped going out. You know, because um, once I went when I was supposed to have been bread rested, mm -hmm. had an incident in the club, my friend had to tell me, out. it's embarrassing. And so I started hanging out with people, you know, kind of draw myself back. And, you know, I just got really sad about the situation. Like I said, I kept losing weight. And then, you know, gained a little weight, lose it back. And, like, even now, my weight is still up and down, and I'm still having issues. And I had that surgery back in 2014, like in November. So when I started acting and modeling, it came like, let me, you know, try to pull myself together. Let me get my life right back. You know, let me start doing what I'm doing. Cause I eventually, you know, graduated from school one time and still had a good high GPA. So I still graduated with others, but you know, it wasn't what it could have been. You know, I didn't have this illness, but I mean, I was just like, let me get myself together. So I started acting, I used to do that. I've done acting ever since elementary all the way up and stopped in um, high school because I always wanted to be a lawyer. I decided that in fifth grade, that's what I was gonna do. So I used to write speeches, I always been a character girl. I just be the one who was like, as a kid, I was just, I was light. Okay, I'm just saying, a little sneaky, just a little light. Like, you know? like get you do it now, that's why, but yeah. So I mean, it was just something that, let me get back to what I'm used to. So I went back to, I guess, childhood things that I enjoyed doing. I started acting, um, then a year later I started modeling, because I was like, well, you know, I'm not what I used to look like, but oh, something's missing on my stomach, you know, are they going to see the scar? I was so scared to get that surgery. I thought it was going to be the long scar, because usually when you get something like that, it's from your um, top of your stomach to the bottom, oh, wow. as if you had like a C-section or something, and it's, it's mm -hmm. weird, it's like, it's not even a C-section, it's just a long cut, mm -hmm. but I had this dope surgery shout out to her <laughs> she's a blessing so it really she just went in through my belly button somehow and it just looks like it's like a little scar oh, i had an alley or something and not anymore or something like that but um i mean i just started doing it to motivate myself because I, I got to this point where i started taking pictures of my good days and my bad days mm -hmm. so it was to the point where oh it could it could be worse right. so that was my way of talking myself out of it because in college i took courses mm -hmm. Because I was trying to figure out what's going on with my side of the family, you know, my mom's side of the family. So I took courses, I took um, abnormal behavior, and so I started learning about mental illnesses. So I kind of knew how to deal with my situation because I knew I was getting depressed. I could tell because you know, I started getting detached, like I said, you know, like I was losing weight, I didn't have much appetite anyway, you know, I couldn't keep anything down. So it was just like, you know, a lot of withdrawals from people, it was just a lot. So I just like, let me, I know how to do, you know what I'm saying? I know how to get out of this situation. So that's why I started doing that. And I just started taking pictures, and, uh, you know, and then I started posting on Facebook, like, oh, cute or whatever. <laughs> then they say, saying, oh, I can borrow, I can do it. Because that's something I wanted to do um, very briefly during my teenage, late teenage years. Because I've never been that type of girl, oh, uh, I'm going to, you know. Gotta put on makeup early. I literally started wearing full face of makeup in 2016. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I wasn't that girl. I was a tomboy. I was a cheerleader though. I was everybody. Um, I was like girly and boyish at the same time. It was weird, but you know, I got along with everybody. But it was just my way of getting myself out of it. I still take these pictures like in my phone. Like I might post pictures, my professional ones, and all of that. But I still have pictures I don't post. Where oh, I'm crying this day, but oh, I went to work still. You know, or you know, I gotta get my life, you know, oh, my pain. Like, I still post on my page, though, if I get my marriage shots. You know, that's like a treatment for me, for my Crohn's. Mm -hmm. So I get those in my thighs, get that shot, you know, post that video, so people know, like, what's going on with me, you know, and stop asking, like, well, are you okay? You know, because I've had people come up to me, oh, you lost weight, or I hate it. Like, I know they don't mean it, but it is so, like, it's kind of borderline hurtful and disrespectful right. at the same time. It's weird. It makes me feel some type of way. Like, and I'm not in control of any of this. I have not had one remission period since, and it's been like nine years, and I haven't had one. So, I mean, it's just like battling depression is hard. It's not an easy task. It's not something people like to share. It's not something that people often know how to deal with. Like I said, if I hadn't been through this with my family or been studying about it, I probably would be worse off. Like, I probably would just probably be completely withdrawn. Right. Like I said, I still have my ups and downs. Mom was like, 
and I think I'm going, you know, get my life to get, oh, I'm taking this dope photo shoot or, you know, going on this set to be around this actor, you know, and stuff like that. Then I'll be like, oh, but they just found information in my colon. Oh, I'm hospitalized. I go through this every year. There's not one year I miss. I'm in the hospital for a week or so, or, you know, it's never, oh, just overnight. No, I'm just that. That's how I get, I get like infections in my, you know, my bowel or whatever, in my stomach. And it's, it's just a lot. Wow. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, one day at a time. I also learned not to just overpower, you know, stuff right. on yourself. Because that's how my mom had her right there. Nurse right now, at one point, it was just like so much mm-hmm. at once. Like I said, same parent. So, mm-hmm. trying to take it like one day at a time. I wake up today, I will be positive, I will be blessed. If you're negative, don't come around me. I don't have time. So, you know, I'm trying to get my life. <laughs> get my, let me be in my space. So, exactly. you know, I got enough to deal with your problems. It's just you want to be angry today. I don't right. have time for that. You know, so I just come to the point where if it doesn't benefit me mentally, physically, spiritually, like if it doesn't feed that, I don't need it. You yeah. know, so I try to stay away from it before I fall back into a bad position or make others around me. You know, like you have friends that care about you, they might be like sad too when you were sad. I've had that happen. Like I said, I had my friend talk me out of the club before. I've got been at the house by myself. I don't say by myself anymore. Um, I've had several instances where I had to call friends like, oh, help me again, get off the floor, or please, please come take me to the hospital. Like, I've had those. So now that's why me and my mom stay back together. Because mm-hmm. um, she just figured out, like, she could help more with if I have those type of days or if I miss a lot of work. Because I, I miss work a lot. Like, mm-hmm. I can miss a month at a time, I miss a week at a time, I miss days out the week, every week. Like, stuff is like that. But my job has grown to accept that. Because mm-hmm. upon hiring that, I told them. Mm-hmm. So don't make me sue, because I will. <laughs> okay, I told them, I got a doctor's excuse, I want to hear it. Oh. And I got a good doctor now, too. A lot of um, dealing with your mental and your physical is having someone that understands you right. as a person, as a, as the illness and everything. I had this one guy, he listened to nothing. I said, the treatment plan ended up not working at all. I had big up antibodies to it, so it didn't have no effect. So I'm just like, he wasted a whole year of my life with this crap. You know, so I have one now, he tries to check on me, he sends me emails and calls, and uh, you know, makes himself very available. Yeah. He listens to what I'm saying. Because, That's very important. Yes, because people don't understand it's important to have like this health provider. Like, I don't depend all on them because right. they are human. Mm-hmm. And I've made out some situations, girl, mm-hmm. I know I'm blessed. I'm just like, thank you, Lord. Know <laughs> and just, you know, I take it right. and run with it. It's, I'm just trying to be taking stuff and run with this what I'm trying to do, right. basically. That's right. Wow. That's my truth, girl. That's a lie. 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 That's Crohn's disease is an um, inflammatory bowel disease. They um, mm-hmm. short term IMBD, that's what they call it. Okay. Um, you have Crohn's, you have also colitis, but my Crohn's has to do with inflammation issues. So I flare up a lot. Um, flaring up is the stomach pains, I have mm-hmm. joint pains, um, fevers, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But with my case, I don't know why it has to be me, Lord, but uh, mm-hmm. my case, with certain temperatures, like if it's too cold or it's too hot, mm-hmm. it affects me. Like when it's too cold, I start to ache very, very badly. It's too hot, I, I start to get sick, like I gotta throw up, I actually do. Mm-hmm. Or if it gets too cold, I start getting a fever, like out of nowhere. I've actually been on the TV set and friends have had to help me go get the PA, slide Tylenol under the door, slide water under the door, mm-hmm. let me catch my life, you know what I'm saying? I'm very weak, um, catch my breath. I Take the time off. Just I got. I can't move. I have to stay right there. Mm-hmm. And I, I've had to leave set several times wow. over the years. It is because mm-hmm. I started set like like I said. Twenty fourteen was a surgery. Started doing the acting thing. Twenty fifteen mm-hmm. like late spring, um, mm-hmm. in April, and um, I just kept doing it. And mm-hmm. it's twenty eighteen now. But I've mm-hmm. had those moments. Still having those moments. But mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, get through it. Look at yeah. you with the positive attitude. <laughs> right. Like I can it's definitely. Just, it's weird. It's just like having a fever. I mean, it's just like having the flu a lot. Because wow. that's what they kept. You know what? I actually was misdiagnosed several times. I went to several different hospitals. I went to my hometown in Athens. I came up here. I went to someone in 
Marietta. I went to actually Grady. Weird as it is, because they do nothing for me after they found the problem. But um, <laughs> at least they found the problem. They found the problem. <laughs> but um, after that, you know, I just it was just like, oh, you got the flu because they will right. test you for everything. You know, they test you for STDs. Right. You know, that's always first. Oh, she got something. Right. No, that's not it. Then they'll check you for other stuff that has to do with. Um, inflammation or something when they do a CT scan and stuff pops up mm -hmm. and um, I know it's just like and then I have migraines I've had that since mm -hmm. a kid so that's not helpful either so it's right. like a separate thing added mm -hmm. on to that and the stomach pains and joint pains and all of that so it's just it's just like a big flu forever type of mm -hmm. thing it is it's sad that's fine. yeah and the only time I know I have an infection is when the fever spikes like really quickly mm -hmm. wow. so we go from zero to 100 real quick <laughs> Wow. Like that, and I can definitely relate to you because me, I used to suffer from lupins and every symptom. Oh my god, lupus is the devil. Yeah. My cousin has lupus. I actually got tested for lupus because sometimes my skin hurts. Really? From touching, just yeah. like a touch. Like, it's weird. Uh -huh. And I had them test me. The test cost $300. It's just like, oh wow. <laughs> Healthcare is like, it ain't nothing. It's a business. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can oh, get through wow. it with, you know, you see your positive attitude with right. the way you go through life. That's what I have to do. And, like, I have, have a big flare in. I don't, God knows how long. Nice. But yes. thank you. Thank That's you. Good. But as for you, oh, like, what do you have to tell, you know, the people who's going through, like, this depression? Who's going through stuff that you're going through right now? I would tell people to um, not withdraw. Like, that's the okay. biggest thing that could, like, like make you or break you type right. of thing. Absolutely. Um, the sooner you start withdrawing from your friends and your daily routines and the stuff yeah. you like to do, right. it, you just get, you go into the sunken place. Like that movie on um, Get Out. You go into the sunken place. Like oh, you go no. deeper and deeper into the <laughs> rabbit hole. Right. And it's hard to pull yourself out. Right. Right. So I just always tell people to try to um, surround yourself with friends right. that actually care and know your situation. Right? Right. Not those friends where you be like, hey, girl, but then be like, I don't like her in real life. Like, not that. Not that. Right. The real friends that will come bring you that soup when you exactly. need it and stuff like that. So definitely gotta have good people. Definitely try to stay positive over everything. Right. And if something is overwhelming, stop. Just don't try to keep going past that. Right. You might just chill for a second and then you know resume. But with me, like I know I was depressed because I'm a Virgo and time limits. I put time. I put stamp on everything. And then when I get to do what I need to do, I get upset about it. Like or I ain't like bad girls. I used to get upset about that too. But it's just I would tell people to definitely. Um, have that close connection with your um, friends and family. Okay. Um, try to not overwhelm yourself, um, mm -hmm. knowing that you might, you know, go back and forth from mm -hmm. that. And um, I don't know. Um, educate yourself about it, because like I said, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know what was going on pre mm -hmm. prior with the family and all of that, and I would have been like, probably not even noticing the signs because mm -hmm. there are signs people right. don't. You know, know what they are, and like I said, it's withdrawal and all of that, loss of appetite, and your mood swings all over the place. So, I mean, even the eating disorder is a, is a type of mental illness, mm -hmm. and all mentally ill people ain't crazy. That's the thing. Right. Those are the ones that have psychotic tendencies, or you know, the schizophrenia. I mean, mm -hmm. Those are that type. So, people have to learn how to separate stuff too, and, right. and your memory loss, and like, oh, am I going crazy? You know, just. just have a moment for yourself and think about what you're going to do. Right.